So if you do decide to burn your fields, again, it is just like pretty much conducting a prescribed burn. You need to do some planning, do some thinking about doing. Don't just go out there and strike a match and let it go. First and foremost, you need to think about smoke and smoke management. You don't want to create a smoke hazard on a road, especially a public highway, any well-traveled road. Don't smoke out town, don't smoke out the neighbors. So again, think about your smoke, where it's going to go. So that means planning wind directions, what would be the best wind direction to burn this with. Secondly, you need to have some fire breaks. Again, you probably want to go in disc, till around the, the field a couple times. Again, you want to make sure it's down to bare soil all the way down so the fire can't creep across it, get into the bar ditches or get over onto the neighbor's property or over onto wheat that hadn't been cut or any other flammable areas and stuff that can be in there. Next, make sure you call, contact your neighbors, let them know you're burning. So then they see smoke, they're not all concerned about it, but first and, then first and foremost after that would be contact local fire department and let them know. Because again, just let them know what's going on. Because again, in this day and age with cell phones, people traveling down the road, anytime they see smoke, they're calling in. And so it's going to get called in. So don't make the fire department come out and make a run for something that you should have already called in because a lot of times they'll charge you for it. Also, you're endangering people, putting them at risk, having them go out and chase something that's not really there. Well, uh, burning wheat stubble is a pretty old uh, cultural practice, uh, generally applied to try to control weeds. You know, we think we're out there <clears throat> burning the stubble, we're going to burn the weeds. And then, you know, with some guys will burn it just simply to get rid of the, the large amount of it. Uh, this year we've had really good rains throughout the growing season, typically in most parts of the state, and so we're going to have a lot of wheat straw. And guys uh, that want to get rid of it versus, you know, plowing it under something like that might burn it. And uh, there are some challenges with it. What we'll see in long-term studies is it's, it's problematic with respect to your organic matter in your soil. Even under cultivation, that uh, straw is important to, to put back into the soil to maintain that organic matter. And then, of course, in no-till systems, it's important to maintain ground cover and all these good things that, that are, are useful in our no-till systems. Um, and so, really long-term continuous annual burning and then plus tillage are very problematic on an organic matter and that affects our soil structure and, and soils that are burned a lot uh, will tend to have uh, problems crusting and things like that. One of the bigger challenges and, and immediate challenges with burning is the potential increase in erosion, uh, wind erosion specifically in western Oklahoma. And what the reason that is, is when you burn stubble off, you're leaving the field to a perfectly smooth condition. In contrast, if you cultivate, you're gonna roughen that surface. And that rough surface is gonna be actually less liable to, to, to erode from wind erosion than uh, the smooth surface left behind in burning. So if we burn and then get a big windstorm on a you know sandy soil, um, or light textured soil that can get off and start blowing, it can be pretty problematic. You touched on the soil characteristics a little, a little bit. Talk about that a little bit more. Burning versus versus leaving as is and and starting, you know, from scratch in the summer and fall. Yeah, like I say, the biggest challenge, or the biggest thing you're you're removing is the organic matter or the carbon in the s system. And so if we plow this residue in. Um, you know, it's going to decompose and it's going to replace uh, some of the organic matter we lose from the tillage and it's going to maintain some of the qualities of, of uh, the soil with respect to soil structure and it's going to hold it open longer through the summer um, and, and prevent it from settling as bad. Um, in contrast, if we burn it, we're not going to have all that and over, the, over time, uh, the burning plus tillage will really drive the organic matter down to near zero, essentially. If we really look at our macronutrients along with carbon, for every ton of straw in the field, you're going to have about 800 pounds of carbon to 20 pounds of nitrogen, 2 pounds of sulfur, 3 pounds of phosphorus, and 30 pounds of potassium. The process of burning impacts many of those nutrients. As far as the carbon, nitrogen, sulfur go, most of them are lost. 90% of the carbon will be lost. So you go from over 800 pounds of carbon per ton down to under 80 pounds of carbon per ton in the burning process. Nitrogen is a 98 to 100% loss process. So that 20 pounds per ton of straw is going to go to near nothing, near one pound is left. 
on our sulfur, it's not a complete loss. We go from two pounds down to well under one pound. It's about a 75% of your sulfur will be lost in the process. Now the phosphorus and potassium isn't lost during the burning process like nitrogen carbon in the process, but we typically account for 25 to 35% of both of those nutrients lost during burning. Typically that is in the ash process. As burning happens, you have the ash lifting and removing it off site. So the process of burning impacts the nutrients that are going to go back into the soil. The significant losses are going to go to carbon and nitrogen.